Hi guys, Tony from GME. Today I'm coming to you direct from our antenna production facility right here in Winston Hills, Sydney, Australia. This facility produces more than 20,000 antennas a month across more than 50 different models. Now, I know a lot of you are confused about why there's so many different antenna models and what the differences are. And today, in this video, we're going to try and explain to you what all the different antennas do and the applications that they suit. All right guys, so we got kicked out of the antenna production facility. Apparently we were getting in the way. We've come back upstairs to the studio. It's a little quieter and we're not gonna interrupt the really important work the guys are doing downstairs, building antennas for you. Now when it comes to selecting antennas, it can be really confusing. There are a lot of different antennas available in the GME range and today we're gonna try and explain to you what some of the key differences are to make selecting the right antenna for your application a lot easier. So when we talk antennas, you'll hear a lot of different terminology used and it can become really confusing. We're gonna try and simplify that for you today. And one of the first things that you'll hear, particularly if you start researching on the internet, is ground dependent and ground independent antennas. Now, ground dependent antennas require a ground plane in order to function correctly. So think a large flat piece of metal that the antenna is mounted to, to ensure that it performs correctly. Now, traditionally that would have meant drilling a hole through the centre of the roof of your vehicle and mounting the antenna there, which is somewhat undesirable. The good news is, technology has developed and created ground independent antennas, which are able to perform in isolation without the requirement for a ground plane, which allows you to mount them on your bull bar, on small antenna mounting brackets, on the guard, and basically anywhere that is not directly in the centre of the roof of your vehicle. We have a huge range of both ground dependent and ground independent antennas, but it's really important that you understand the key differences because if you mount a ground dependent antenna away from the ground plane, you're not gonna get the optimal performance. And unfortunately, when we're out and about, we do see that pretty often. So here we've got an example of a ground dependent antenna. This particular antenna is suited for agricultural vehicles, so think tractors, you can mount this thing on the roof of the tractor, ensuring it's got a ground plane and you'll get fantastic performance. If you were to mount that antenna on your bull bar of your four wheel drive, however, it's not gonna work very well. Now, when we move to ground independent antennas, as I mentioned, they don't require a ground plane. In order to do this, they need a couple of other parts. So here, we've got what's known as an elevated feed antenna. Now, this is the elevated feed and then you've got your whip on top and there's a number of different varieties of elevated feed antennas. The one that I've got here is a stainless steel whip. This is designed for the heavy vehicle industry predominantly. So mirror mounting on your Kenworths, on your Macs and your Volvos, these are not designed for use on four wheel drive vehicles. The vibrations that an antenna experiences when it's mounted on the bull bar, particularly on a diesel vehicle, will quite simply result in the antenna whip vibrating itself to death it'll break. If you're going for an elevated feed style antenna for your four wheel drive, we have a number of models available with a fiberglass whip. Now the fiberglass whip will still mount on the same elevated feed base, so it's still a ground independent style antenna, but because it's a fiberglass design, it will cope much better with the vibrations experienced in a four wheel drive situation. Stepping up yet again, we've got what's known as our radome style antennas. So our most popular one, is the 4705 here, which is a pretty serious looking antenna. And this is designed for hardcore four wheel drive applications. It still has an elevated feed style design, but the elevated feed is contained in this aluminium ferrule. The radiating element of the antenna is inside this large fiberglass radome. These things are built super tough, and this is the sort of antenna that you're looking for if you're mounting it on the bull bar of your hardcore four wheel drive, something that's gonna put up with a lot of abuse in the bush, or if you're driving heavily corrugated roads in the Australian outback, these are the style of antennas that you want to go for. So they're the main technical differences, and then you'll notice that within each of these styles of antenna, we've got a huge range of different lengths, thicknesses, and colors. 
Now, when it comes to colour, that's an easy one. Choose the colour that you like the best or that will suit the look of your vehicle. When it comes to the thickness or indeed the size of the spring, that's generally related to the amount of punishment that the antenna will take. So the 4705 that I just showed you, it's got a really big solid spring on the bottom of it. It's gonna put up with the most abuse in the probably the harshest conditions that you're likely to experience. Right down to the smaller springs, lighter duty, suited for vehicles that might be towing a caravan on bitumen and are unlikely to see any off-road conditions. Now, when it comes to the length of the antenna, it's very important. Bigger is not necessarily better when it comes to antennas. Shorter antennas generally have lower gain. Our range starts at 2.1 dBi. What that means is that the antenna produces a more rounded radiation pattern. It won't transmit as far as a longer antenna with higher gain, but in hilly mountainous terrain or in built up areas, that more rounded radiation pattern will actually give you better performance than a longer high gain antenna, which has a much flatter or narrower radiation pattern. Now, if you're out in the middle of the Nullarbor Plain, for example, a longer antenna with higher gain is gonna give you much greater transmission distance than a shorter antenna with lower gain. Our antennas go right up to 8.1 dBi of gain, but they're also 2.4 meters long. If you were to use that style of antenna in the high country in Victoria, you're gonna get terrible performance. This is why GME offers a range of antennas with interchangeable whips. So the 4700 series that I mentioned here, you can unscrew the base and spring from the whip and you can interchange the whips to suit the terrain that you're traveling in. So these particular bases will accept a 2.1, a 6.6 .6, or an 8.1 dBi whip, which enables you to have the best performance to suit the terrain that you're in. And that's what you need to keep in mind. Of course, I know some of you want the look of the big antennas on the front of the vehicle, but you just need to remember that it won't always give you the best performance. So that's probably enough for today without getting too technical. Keep in mind though, there's a huge amount of information about antennas on gme.net.au, but if there's anything specific that you'd like to know, feel free to leave a comment below. And if I don't know the answer to it, I'll ask one of our much smarter engineers and we'll be able to get back to you to answer any question that you might have in relation to GME antennas.